Hi, welcome to The Sweet Life of Steve, where today we're baking bread. This recipe is so versatile, you can use it in a number of ways, but today we're gonna make a trio. Buns, buns of cinnamon, and buns of fried. This recipe was my Aunt Mary's. It's something very special to me, something that I grew up both eating and making. It was originally my grandmother's recipe, who taught it to my aunt, who taught it to my mother, who taught it to my sister. So I come from a long line of baking. I'd like to honor all of the strong women in my life who've helped me to become the person I am today. We'll also make a drink in their honor. It's a little bit sweet, a little bit tart, and packs a punch when you need it. This one is a bit of a play on a tequila sunrise. I'm actually going to use this agave spirit from our friends at Grey Wolf. Now it's not tequila, because it's not made in Mexico, but it's pretty much tequila. Two ounces. Feels about right, maybe that's three. Or more, half an ounce of cranberry juice, just because I love that color. I'm using tangerine juice, and that's gonna be about three ounces. One, two, three. Ooh, look at that pretty color. And then to make it fun, almost like a sangria, I'm gonna throw in some slices of that tangerine and some frozen cranberries. That'll kind of act as a little bit more icy refreshment. Stir, 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 so everybody comes together. Just a little splash of sparkling water. To all the ladies out there, single, naughty, or who run the world. Naughty. Let's start by making our dough. Anytime that you're doing a bread dough, always do liquids first, then dry. We're starting with our water. To that, I'm adding some instant mashed potato flakes. And I can tell you from trial and error that the cheapest potato flakes that you can find are the best ones to use. So hit up the dollar store. Also, make sure that they are plain, not anything that's garlic chive. Some neutral flavored oil. I'm using canola oil because I grew up on a canola farm, so I just do that. But grapeseed oil or vegetable oil will do. A little bit of vinegar. Now here's another thing about recipes that have been passed down from generation to generation, especially something you've probably learned from your grandmother or great-grandmother. Anytime it's a water-based recipe, it almost always has vinegar in it. And I think that's actually really to deal with the fact that most of those women were using hard well water. So the vinegar is actually a way of softening up that water. I've made this recipe without the vinegar and it makes no difference whatsoever, but I do it for nostalgia. Two eggs, sugar for tenderness, and salt for flavor. We're gonna let that sit for a few minutes because we want those mashed potato flakes to hydrate, soften up. I'm just gonna give her a quick little stir, break up those eggs. My mother taught my father how to bake bread, and growing up, I assumed everybody's dad knew how to bake bread. But when my dad did it, he wanted fresh potatoes, so he actually boiled them himself, let them cool, mashed them, and then he used the cold potato water in his bread, so it had a little bit more of a starchy texture than the one that my mother made. They are both delicious. And I'm going to say this now because she's going to be mad at me. My mother made excellent bread. It was the best in the world. So that's just sat for a minute. We wanna make sure those potato flakes are hydrated. And this is really an important step because if you don't, sometimes your bread dough will actually have little flakes of the potato flake in it. And that's just pretty nasty. Here's another trick. With your yeast, you want to make sure to sprinkle all over the top of the liquid. And this is an important step. What you want to do is make sure that your yeast is actually alive. So you sprinkle it across the top of the liquid and just wait for a minute and get in there and try to smell it. If you start to get that yeasty, beery smell, then you know your yeast is alive and you can keep going. If you don't, it means it's dead and you'll need to start all over again, probably with brand new yeast. But this way you haven't wasted all of your ingredients because you know right now whether it's alive or not. It's alive! And of course, my last ingredient is flour. And I'm using AP flour, not bread flour. Fun little trick. I like to take my dough hook here, and I call it the Captain Hook method because I'm just gonna come in here and stir around a little bit, making sure that the flour is hydrated, and I'm also scraping the sides of the bowl. Kind of reminds me, what is a pirate's favorite letter? R. He likes R, but the C be his true love.
Stupid. So I'm coming in here, Captain hooking it up a little bit, just till it gets a little bit lumpy, bumpy, and dumpy. Now it's time to go on the mixer. About five minutes on speed three. Good times. Mm -mm. It's shaking my drink. So our dough is done, it's been about five minutes. Now you can see it's a little bit sticky, just the tiniest little bit, and that's totally fine. Scrape it out into a greased bowl, and then we're gonna let it sit. You can use this pretty much right away, or what we do at our bakery is we actually make this and we let it sit in the refrigerator for 24 hours, and then we shape it. I actually like doing it better that way, it just makes it a little bit easier. No matter how you're gonna use this, you want to take the bottom of your dough and kind of bring it up to the middle, going all the way around. This is just a little sort of secret to make sure that the entire ball of dough actually gets evenly greased from the grease that's already in the bowl. And then you wanna turn it over, just like that, and then I always like to spank it because it's fun. If I'm using this dough right away, I will cover this with plastic wrap and let it sit for about 20 to 30 minutes. Then I can shape it into rolls, or I can shape it into loaves, I can shape it into cinnamon rolls. I can do all manner of things with it. Or I can put it in the refrigerator and let it cool, and then I can use it tomorrow. And that's what I'm going to do. So this is dough that's been sitting in the fridge for about 24 hours, and we're going to start some shaping. I floured the table, and I'm just gonna do a little flour on top. This just makes it so much easier for um, transporting. We're gonna cut this in half, and I'll use half for my rolls, back rolls, and half for my cinnamon rolls. So we'll just set this guy aside. And now this will be our rolls. We'll get 12 out of this. So that means if you use all rolls, you'll get two dozen. You could also get two really big full-size loaves or three sort of manageable loaves out of this if you're doing loaves of bread. Now, of course, we should cut this up equally. A scale would be best, but I'm lazy. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. 12 equal pieces, or equal as they can be. Three, four, five, six. And if one looks a little bit smaller than the other, you just rub from Peter to pay Paul. And now for the shaping. So this is basically the technique. You're gonna take the, your hand and you're going to kind of almost palm as if you're palming a basketball. I think that's how they do that and squeeze it in, and then bring your thumb and your baby finger in at the end. So kind of like this. Just like that. You'll want to make sure that there really isn't any flour at the part where you're going to roll. So just put it down with your hand, roll, make sure your drink doesn't spill, and bring your hands in together just like that. If the top of your roll is a little bit yucky, just put the palm of your hand in some flour and roll on the top, and then that will get nice and smooth, except like that. Just like that. Boom, easy peasy. Now, as I tell all my staff at the bakery, if your shoulder starts to hurt a little bit, then you're doing it right. This is a great thing for kids to do. It's lots of fun. Of course, you can do any types of shapes. You can braid this, you can do whatever, whatever your little heart desires. There we go, we've got our last one. Pretty. Cover these with some plastic wrap. Make sure that you spray the bottom of the plastic wrap with some cooking spray of some kind so it doesn't stick, and then set them at a warm spot to proof. And they're going to double in size, that's when you know they're proofed, and then they'll bake a little bit later on. So that's our rolls. What are we doing next? All the married men, all the married men, all the married men, and put your hands up. Time for buns of cinnamon. So first I need to flour my work surface so that I can roll out my dough. I have a lot of pet peeves, but here's a pet peeve when it comes to flouring. This just drives me insane when I see this because it's not gonna help you at all. So take some flour between your three fingers and your thumb, tuck underneath your pinky, and then sort of spread it out a little bit, and the action is from the side, almost like when you're skipping stones. And then you'll get a nice, even coverage. Just fairy dust everywhere around here, isn't it? So I have well floured my work surface, and now it's time to do my cinnamon rolls. 
A little bit of flour on top too, using that same method. And then of course, time to roll. Now remember when rolling, you're trying to drive the dough. So you don't want it to stick to your surface. Check always to make sure that it actually moves independently of your work surface. And only ever roll in one direction, forward, towards you, this way, this way. This sort of motion drives me. We're rolling it out just a bit so that it's thin even all the way around. And of course, we want to make it as square as possible. So you can just tug it a little bit where you need to tug it a little bit. The jokes just write themselves around here. Now we're going to spread a little bit of butter. And you're going to use the best spreader that God made, which is just your hands. You want room temperature butter. Just dot it around a little bit and spread it out. I don't know how much. Probably, I don't know about four, six tablespoons, something like that. Make sure you've got a fairly even coating. And now time for our cinnamon sugar. Cinnamon sugar. Cinnamon. Another pet peeve of mine is, I don't have that many pet peeves at all. Cinnamon sugar should taste like cinnamon, not sugar. So anytime I see a recipe that's a cup of sugar and a teaspoon of cinnamon, that's not cinnamon sugar. That's cinnamon sugar. So my recipe for cinnamon sugar is really very simple. Half a cup of white sugar, half a cup of brown sugar, and a third, that's right, a third of a cup of cinnamon. Really cinnamony. And we're going to liberally sprinkle all over our rolls. Time to roll. So it's actually easier to roll towards you than it is to roll away from you. You've got more control as you're coming this way. So I start at the top, just really tuck it under. That's going to make sure that the center of the roll is really, really tight. Then we can actually start to just sort of roll a little bit towards us. Every about half a rotation, I tuck under again, just to make sure, again, we want it nice and tight. And then once I'm about a third of the way down, I'll actually tug the sides just a little bit and then roll and tug and roll and tug and roll all the way to the end. And what that little tugging sideways motion does is it actually ensures that our rolls are even at the ends and they're not kind of splaying out, almost looking like little cobs of corn. Then I can stretch it out a little bit and out of this, I could get a dozen cinnamon rolls very easily, but I'm gonna make big fatties. Eight. Just right down the middle, in fourths, then in eighths. And these are going to be beautiful. Look at that. Place these in your baking vessel of choice. Make sure that it has been sprayed with a little bit of cooking spray, and then we'll cover them again with plastic wrap that has also been sprayed with cooking spray. Leave them in a warm area till they've doubled in size. So they've at least doubled and they're pillowy. That's the biggest key to proofing is that they should be pillowy. Nice and squishy. They definitely should feel still like there's some structure. And that's kind of a really important thing. This sort of proofing business is where we sometimes are guessing a little bit. It should feel soft, but still have structure. So that's a really important. So with just a little touch, you see how they spring back. 350 degrees, we're gonna bake them until they're done. Here's some of our keys. They'll have a nice golden crust on the top, an internal temperature of between 200 and 205 degrees Fahrenheit. We should rotate the pans after about the first 10 minutes of baking. You want to get the benefits of what we call the oven spring or that rise. Don't check right away because then your bread is going to fall. So let it rise fully in the oven and then that's when you can start to move the pans around a little bit. They'll also smell really, really good. Ugh! I'm gonna do one pan at a time. And now, oh look, I guess spun's four ways. Oh, we can do that part again. You want to do? Are, are you telling me that you need a shot of these buns right here?
Look at these beauties. So I just pulled them out of the oven because they're done, because you should always pull out when you're done. And now to make sure that we have a nice soft crust, we're gonna rub them with some butter. Mmm. So just get in here. So if you want to have crusty bread, especially on your rolls, don't brush them with butter on the top. The butter will soften that crust up. If you would like a really, really crusty roll, you can actually spritz them with a little bit of water before you're putting them into the oven and that will help to develop a really nice crust. I love me a glazed bun. So we get all of these beautiful buttery toppings. It smells so good in here, you guys. There is nothing quite as good as fresh baked bread. Look at how soft this is in the middle. Mm, it's so good. Cup. <laughs> Time to make the donuts. For this recipe, what I did is instead of using the vegetable oil, I actually used melted butter to make this dough. It's gonna give a little bit more richness and a little bit more color when we're frying. I put it into a half sheet pan and I let it proof in the refrigerator overnight. Now I've just dumped it out onto a floured surface and I'm gonna flour the top a little bit and then we're gonna start. So I don't need to let this dough proof at room temperature. This is a make, fridge, cut and fry. If you have a donut cutter, by all means, go ahead. But I don't. Who has a donut cutter in their house? So I am doing super old school. I'm just taking a glass and I'm going to cut my little circles, which will become my deep fried circles of joy. Then, how do we get a hole in the middle, you might ask? Well, I'm glad you did. We'll just take our little donut poo, and we're just gonna poke a little hole right in the middle, just like that. And into the fryer we go. Our oil is at around 360 degrees. Remember, it's gonna drop a little bit because this dough is slightly cool. And we're gonna fry them until they are golden brown and delicious. They'll start to float pretty much right away, but make sure that they don't stick to the bottom of the pan. And you see I've got a thermometer here so I can monitor the temperature at all times. And that's really, really important for when you're frying. About 30 seconds before you flip them because you want to develop golden brown color on the bottom. If you just throw them in and flip them right away and then just keep flipping, they're not gonna do any good. So just set it and forget it. But don't forget it because it's hot oil. You don't wanna forget that. I'm using this little roly-poly technique because I want the air to escape. If it gets trapped in the glass, it's gonna kind of create this sort of farting thing and I'm never gonna be able to get the cup out. So farts are not good. So this little roly technique is just perfect to avoid that. Now I can tell the bottoms are nice and golden brown, so I'm gonna flip them over. <gasps> so pretty. I love deep fried circles of joy. Just about another 15, 20 seconds on that side and we'll pull them out, cause they'll be done, pull out when you're done. And then we're gonna dredge them in this gorgeous cinnamon sugar. Of course you can leave them and put a glaze on them or dip them in chocolate or whatever your little hearts desire. But I'm using cinnamon sugar cause that's what I like. All right, let's get out our guys. Drain them onto some paper towel for a few seconds. And then while they're still hot and a little bit sticky from the grease, dredge them right away. Ooh, so pretty. I'm gonna put that right over here because we're running out of space in this kitchen. Look at that! Nice and soft on the inside. Smelly of cinnamon, cinnamon in it. And it's really good too. But I'm never gonna know. The rest of this dough you can kind of just push together. You could re roll it out, but your donuts will be a little bit flatter. So my grandmother just used to cut up these little bits and just fry all these little random shapes. We called them twiddle bugs and we actually liked those the best because they were special. Those were just for the kids. You could also then roll these out and you could use it for a completely different use. So you could maybe make like, I don't know, like a flatbread out of them or some crackers or some little twists or whatever. The possibilities are endless. 
Powdered sugar also at, at this point is another really, really good topping because the donut is still hot. So if you dip it in powdered sugar, it will actually kind of cause the sugar to melt a little bit and almost form this tiniest little glaze on top. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Speaking of yummy, Mm. So good. Another little trick for your uh, oil here is you can actually strain it, let it cool, and you can fry with it one more time. Um, don't do any more after that. And our little twiddle bugs. Well, they look like chicken nuggets from that place that shall not be named. You know who I'm talking about. This episode was brought to you by the letter Q and the n How, what, do it again. Without the fuck ups? So it's an E, a G, and a nine. And a six. And a 69. Oh, G, where the fuck's the six? Six, no, six, and nine? Nine. Fucking hell. This is way too much work for a joke. This episode was brought to you by the letter E, the letter G, the number six, and the number nine. I'm Amazing. Look at this gorgeous spread. He is going to be so excited. Hey, honey, come check out my buns. With my tequila. With your tequila. Mmm, what do you think? Did you taste it? Yes. It looks like Half of it. Looks like you've been drinking that a lot. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, yes, it is. Drink your juice, Shelby. <laughs> Drink your juice. All right, so um, we made some buns and some cinnamon buns and some fried buns, some donuts. Which do you want? Circles of joy. Circles of joy. Ooh, did I just say circus? I think I'm drunk. Circles of joy. A donut. You're gonna donut? All right, I'm gonna have one of these. Mm. Look at that. Beautiful. Ready? Were you trying to get some of that glaze in your mouth? All right, here we go. Mmm. How is it? Delicious. Is it delicious? Yeah. If you don't get it all over your face, you're not doing it right. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. Let me know. How do you like your buns? <laughs> do my buns look good over here? How are my buns over here? How are my buns? Oh my God. Has anyone seen my buns?